I'm going to Jamie. Oh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. You're live now. I'm Dr. Jamie Kaufman, and uh, it's the 1st of February. For those of you interested, the daylight savings time will return in 39 days, the first sign of spring. I've been doing these um, Facebook Lives for a while, and there's been some concern that I'm not answering everybody's questions. Um, to be honest with you, it, it's hard for me to answer some of the questions uh, for two reasons. First of all, because uh, many of them are answered on the blog. Um, for example, there's a question, is uh, alkaline water safe? There's a specific article that's just written about that and that only. Um, and then, uh, and, and some of them um, are, are personal questions that are difficult to answer. There's a question about achalasia, which I may get to address, but it's a rare, it's a rare problem, and uh, I have some recommendations for that. But I'll do the best I can to try to answer questions um, uh, on these blogs. In this particular case, I've structured it so that I'd like to talk about questions of diagnosis first, um, and then uh, treatment. And of course, treatment is mostly, in this case, about diet and lifestyle. And um, in, indeed, I may end up uh, doing next uh, month's segment, if I can get someone to help me in the kitchen, on all the kind of dietary tricks that I've learned over the years. What do I do with rice? How do I make it? Where do I get it? Um, what kind of options give you, you know, a lot of good calories in the morning and all that. So we'll, we'll see about next month. Um, I had a great epiphany. A lot of people ask me, how do I find doctors who know what you know? Um, it's difficult being a pioneer. Let me move some in the middle of the screen. Um, it, it's not it's not easy, uh, and and the answer is that um, I've had an epiphany. Reflux is not a medical problem. You're not going to get a doctor who spends an hour with you and go back and forth about your diet and lifestyle. All the diseases of our time all are, are all diet and lifestyle related. So the, the answer to the question is you cannot eat whatever you want whenever you want it. And the question of you know even more complicated things like triggers like like onions and chocolate, tomatoes and all these things are idiosyncratic. Meaning everybody's different. And I, I never could eat chocolate. I could eat cooked onions and so on when I had reflux. <clears throat> so to answer the question as best I can, um, the gastroenterologist in the 70s started putting scopes down people and putting them on reflux medicine. Uh, that is the GI model of reflux. There's no discussion really about diet and lifestyle and pepsin and is it correctable. Here, take these pills, you'll take them the rest of your life. So the answer to the question is, in my opinion, the gastroenterologist who's the go-to doctor for reflux doesn't know anything about it. Worse than that, uh, most of you don't have heartburn. So for every, we've studied this, there's data, there's hard peer-reviewed data. So for every patient who has heartburn, there are four people who have respiratory reflux. And respiratory reflux, as you may know, is the new term for LPR because LPR is a mouthful. So anyway, to answer the question, um, it's going to be probably a university hospital where they have different specialists within the field of ENT, otolaryngology. And you need to call and say, I need to speak to a clinical person. The receptionist won't answer. I need to speak to a nurse who works with a doctor or someone. And you want to ask, do you have a reflux? It's an ENT doctor. Do you have a reflux specialist? And the way you know if she's a, a reflux specialist is, does she or he do transnasal esophagoscopy, which is um, a, a blog that's coming in a couple of weeks. But it is the future. There's absolutely no reason why anyone should, should go to sleep um, in, a, in a surgery center and have a bill of $2,000 uh, to have someone look down their esophagus. Uh, make sure there's not significant pathology. By the way, most people don't. So that uh, 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 more than 83% uh, 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 of people with uh, respiratory reflux have flat normal esophageal exams. So the finding of the doctor is, um, in this particular case, um, you're the doctor. So I'm going to talk about self-diagnosis for a second. Uh, there's an article called The Stages of Reflux and Recovery, which I'm betting is the least read of my blogs. 
and it's one of the one of the places where you can find uh, the reflux uh, symptom index. And um, if you fill this out and your score is 15, uh, the chances are, I don't remember the number, but it's 90 something percent you'll have an abnormal pH study with the lindopharyngeal reflux. Now it comes to the, to, the, to the other stuff. I'm not very good at this. So I'll read them to you. So who else should be, who else, who else has respiratory reflux? If you have lung problems, you're not a coal miner, you don't have a family history, you don't have a named disease like, you know, cystic fibrosis, or you don't smoke, you have shortness of breath, um, if you have COPD. It's interesting, there's an ad on television where they show this like 20-something year old woman, and they say, if you wake up in the middle of the night coughing, um, that you may have COPD and they want you to take some expensive medicine. Uh, in reality, if you wake up in the middle of the night coughing, it's reflux, there's nothing else that causes that, period. I mean, aspiration, I mean, there are other, but I mean, it's basically reflux. And so COPD is caused by, by reflux. So is every other lung disease, if not caused by, accelerated by. It's like fighting fire with water in one hose and gasoline in the other. So then the asthma question, I've written a lot about this. I want to tell you that when you go on my blog, nobody maybe is using the, the left-hand section where it says topics. And the topics are breathing problems, asthma, pepsin. So you could then just, just click on that and see an array of the articles that address that subject. Um, I've written this blog for you. I'm uh, old and I want to get as much of I, uh, that I know in the public domain. So the rest of them are snoring and sleep apnea, choking episodes, chronic bronchitis, chronic cough, and sinusitis. Sinusitis, I've mentioned in the past, is a big problem now because a lot of unnecessary surgery seems to be being done. So um, th that's sort of where we are. Uh, this, um, not only is this uh, reflux uh, symptom index uh, on that article, uh, the stages of reflux and recovery, which is I think on October 3rd, uh, 2022, on dro in dropping acid, it's page 32, um, and Dr. Kaufman's acid reflux diets on page three, and the chronic cough enigmas on page um, 13. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is I need to have a bigger reach to be able to influence healthcare. I mean, I want to get inside Medicare, I want to get inside Congress. Um, I am uh, delighted that at this point we're getting the blog, my site is getting a half million hits a month. That's organic growth and a little bit of advertising, um, but not much. And so that this means that when you hear something that's important or you think is important, when you have a friend who's a chronic throat clearer, when you have a friend who's had a chronic cough and can't get a good outcome, um, seen 16 doctors, honestly, uh, been to a famous medical center, you know, send, send links. Send links to your doctor if you have a neurogenic problem. It's not that common. Um, when it compared to reflux, but there's now an article on, on the Vegas. It's a complicated three-part article. So, by the way, the sleep apnea article, um, when I examine people, the whole pharynx looks granular and narrow, and I can say to somebody, hey, you didn't tell me you have snoring and sleep apnea. Oh, yeah, I got one of those machines. So, so the question, uh, Andrea, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go through questions and, and just sort of respond. Um, can LPR affect the lungs? And the answer is yes, in every possible way. It can give you bronchitis, it can give you uh, emphysema, it can give you any number of diseases. Um, one of the most common is you see a ground glass appearance around the bronchi with someone who's had, you know, chronic intermittent um, uh, mild aspiration events into their lung over a period of years. I want to talk about difficulty breathing. So uh, there, 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 I've made these points before, but if you have trouble getting air in rather than out, um, it's not asthma, period. End of story. Prolonged exhalation, can't get the air out of the lungs, um, wheezing on exhalation, that's asthma. There's one particular symptom that I found for shortness of breath that's absolutely 
uh, uh, vagus and, and, and reflux. It's vaguely mediated, but it's a reflux symptom. The inability to take a full breath in, or the uncomfortableness of taking a full breath in. If you have that, you have respiratory reflux. So, you know, without knowing specific issues about, about, about the lung diseases, um, I can tell you that um, uh, they can accelerate um, even other diseases uh, like, uh, 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 by the way, uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis may end up being a reflux problem. And in my lifetime as a clinician, I've pulled a couple of people out of the lung transplant line by getting the reflux effectively treated. Now, the next question has to do with achalasia. Achalasia is so uh, when the esophagus essentially becomes a dead tube and it can end up being essentially full of food that ends up in the throat and or lung. Um, I'm not going to say much about achalasia, except that I have had a number of patients with achalasia. And I recommend if you don't have a bed, um, you need a bed that goes at 45 degrees and the knees should gash. Um, this position is the position that most people have put in. It's called semi fileless position. And you see, you can sleep on your side, uh, you can pillow up. Um, but you're the one who ought to buy the, the, the bed that goes up and down, and, and 45 degrees is gravity. No eating close to dinner. You ought to be five hours routinely. If you go to bed at 11, you ought to have you closing the kitchen um, at, at around 5.30, eat at 5. Um, and you ought to make sure your evening meal is the smallest meal, and uh, so on. So there, and, and you need to have periodic evaluation. Uh, the barium swallow esophagram is pretty good. Uh, because it's a it's an ongoing exam, and it was just not just it's a static collapse too, like you get with an endoscopy. By the way, endoscopy is not how you diagnose reflux. Period. All right? It's how you decide whether somebody's got significant esophageal pathology, which is really rather uncommon in truth. And when it comes to Barrett's, I've had about 800 Barrett's patients in my career. Followed many of them for a decade or more. Um, I've had zero patients develop cancer um, in that time. So reflux causes cancer, not Barrett's. Um, Susan wants to know, when I cough up, um, uh, should I spit it out or is it okay to swallow it? And the answer is yes. You can spit it out or swallow it. It makes no difference. Um, excess mucus, chronic throat clearing. This uh, is the respiratory system and the lining or mucous membrane. So too much mucus, thick mucus. Um, by the way, which is quite different than allergy, um, uh, is, uh, is ubiquitous as a symptom. Um, a pepsin in the throat issue, Jamie, Jamie wants to ask, is baking soda the only solution to deactivate at this time? Um, I want to tell you this is a great question. No one needs to use baking soda. So if you haven't read the article on what is pepsin and how to get rid of pepsin, um, you should look at the how to get rid of pepsin. Um, and I'm going to show you something. On the, on the bottom of the how to get rid of pepsin, you're going to see these bottles. And these come, I think, four for about eight dollars from Amazon. By the way, they may make nose drops too. So this has alcohol and water in it, 9.5. People ask, next question, people ask me what alcohol and water do I prefer? There's a little lady in Canada, um, I can't remember her name, I talked to her the last uh, five or ten years ago, but she makes what looks like a Brita pills a pitcher with some calcium carbonate in it. It's quite safe and it makes alkaline water pH 9.5. Um, basically, I live carrying around this thing even if I go out. My pH 9.5 water um, is uh, 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 is the right <clears throat> is the right number. There is no side effect of alkaline water. Period. Zero. None. Nil. Never. Alkaline water, there are millions of people who drink pH 9 every day, all day, have for generations. That's what comes out of the ground where they live. So alkaline water. Now, if you start adding things, for example, Coca-Cola, I think it's Coca-Cola makes Essentia. Essentia has phosphates and other chemicals in it. Um, so I'm a big fan of the zero water pitcher. If you buy that and it's not cheap, uh, it, 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 in the long run, it will save you money. Um, don't put it in the dishwasher because it will melt. So people ask me, what is my favorite alkaline water? 
Uh, my second favorite alkaline water seems to be, because people talk about it, is a Trader Joe's, if you have a Trader Joe's. And Alka-10 seems to be doing okay, too. I'm not a fan of uh, anything that's below pH 9.5. And here's the deal. When you swallow alkaline water, you don't get any in most of your lower throat. It clamps shut. That's so the water doesn't go in your lung. You don't aspirate every time. You swallow. But let's just say I'm a singer on Broadway and I was out a little bit late last night and I was a little worried about reflux. I'm spraying my vocal cords. This is the only treatment. Pepsin dies at pH 8 point something, 8.5. This is 9.5. So, and, and if you have nose problems, you get up in the morning and put nose drops in. In the event that it burns, there's nothing to do with the alkaline water. It means your reflux is terrible. It'll stop burning when your reflux gets better. So, the alkaline water spray and the alkaline water, um, I go with Sarah Water Pitcher and these little sprayers, and, 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 and it seems to work out very, very well. Um, can coughing be caused by heart issues? And the answer is yes. Um, and, and vice versa, coughing can cause uh, uh, syncope, heart, uh, and, and arrhythmias. I've, I, when I wrote the, uh, just so you know, when I wrote the three-part Vegas article, I thought very few people are going to read this because there's only a section that's going to apply to them. Uh, the second part's about voice and the third part's about cardiac and so on. Um, I've had patients that had arrhythmias related to reflux. Okay, and, and so you might ask the question, um, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we actually did a Holter monitor and a pH study simultaneously. And so the answer is the vagus runs the cardiovascular system and the vagus runs reflux and the vagus is sensory. Um, for, so you could have, we've seen patients who had um, heartburn associated with uh, other symptoms, including, by the way, one with hiccuping, which is, must be a real connection in the brainstem and uh, with, with cardiac arrhythmia. So they're not common patients, but they certainly can occur. There's a question about can throat clearing turn into a tick? Um, the answer is no, it can get habituated, but um, ticks are different. Um, there are people who have ticks that, that are sent to me because they have chronic throat clearing, but they don't have any of the other manifestations of reflux, and actually they look and sound more like a, more like a tick. Um, and um, so, uh, another question, I've been on the alkaline diet since October, I'm still clearing my throat and all that. So the answer, this is uh, Francis, Francis, you still have reflux. An alkaline diet is only one way. If you're if you're if you're eating dinner at eight o'clock and going to bed at ten thirty, it doesn't matter whether you eat lettuce for dinner. So, the, you know, eating too close to bed, uh, things that are too acidic, too fat, um, uh, 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 you're not eating. But then there are other things that can be done. We use a, 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 a gaviscon and formatidine and um, elevation of the bed to 45 degrees. And I'm going to get to the, there are, by the way, three phases of the reflux diet, um, what I call detox, which is the first three to whatever, four or five weeks, and then transition, and then maintenance. I'm going to talk about that. Um, there's a question about that coming up. So the answer is you still have reflux and the diet isn't enough. The other possibility is that you have in your diet a trigger food. So anything can be a trigger food, pretty much, although Avocados and olive oil and fish um, don't seem to be trigger foods. You can have all the olive oil you want because it turns out to be important in, in people who want to be healthy or olive oil light things. So you're still refluxing, uh, Francis, and uh, you know, you know, get in there and look at the blog. And by the way, the blog is sometimes a sleeper. Sometimes an article, for example, an article on juicing, and that article has um, you know the pH of a lot of fruits and vegetables in there, and um, I do recommend pH paper. Um, there, there are links to this one, which is only eight dollars and is the right one, um, on several of the blogs. So um, Steve wants to know about hiatal hernia. Um, so let me explain what a hiatal hernia is. Uh, under normal circumstances, um, this is I can't do it quite. Uh, this is uh, this is my esophagus, and here's the stomach. 
and the diaphragm is right at the uh, uh, G junction at the lower valve. If the esophagus is, is, is slips up a little bit, that's called a hiatal hernia. The vast majority of people have a, a one to three centimeter hiatal hernia, even four centimeter. Um, we used to think that was a problem, and people went to surgery to have their hernia fixed. Now we know you can have reflux without a hernia and a hernia without reflux. It does weaken the valve a little bit. The pinch crock of the diaphragm adds about a third of the pressure, but you can have reflux without a hernia, and hernia without reflux. So we, we don't pay much attention to, to, to hernias unless you get, start getting into six centimeters and above. It's an interesting question. What do you think about small intestinal bacterial growth SIBO? I think it's, was it fake news? Your flora can be dramatically altered by, um, by reflux. Uh, when I started doing transnasal esophagoscopy, about 10% of the population had rip-roaring candida esophagitis. And, some, and so what happens if you kill all the normal flora, you can, you can have changes. So I think that treatment of reflux is the, is the, is the number one issue, and I'm not a fan of the SIBO, the special SIBO diet and all that. Donna wants to know, um, alkaline water, is it okay to drink it exclusively? Um, there is a blog that says this. Yes, I drink 9.5 um, all the time. Um, obviously, I don't carry it into a restaurant, but you know, if, if I go to play in the pool league or I go to play golf, I um, start out with my uh, little bit of ice and my 9.5. So uh, this gets me to a very, very important question that I'm going to skip to. And I'm really, really glad that this question came up. Carrie says, no, it's not Carrie. Hold on a second. Here we go. Yes, Carrie. So does this, this pH paper help you determine what food does in your body? And like lemon turns into an alkaline, and like chicken turns into an acid. And um, this is, it falls into the category of medical bullshit. And where it derives is, because the health line apparently is the number one um, resource. And there's an article that was written, oops, sorry. There's an article that was written um, in 2021 on Healthline um, by uh, Alina Petrie and uh, Sadie Meeks, um, September 7th, 2021, lemon juice, acidic or alkaline, does it matter? This is about the blood. Can you change the pH of your blood? It has nothing to do with reflux. You got pepsin. Pepsin requires acid activation. So, for example, apple cider vinegar um, the, the only data that's available is apple cider vinegar can, pr can produce esophageal burns, a peer-reviewed article. So the answer is l l everything that's acidic uh, turns base. And everything, and because the, the answer is your body has an internal pH in your blood of very close to 7.4. And you can't change that. You'll excrete extra stuff. Your body will make adjustments. So your pH, your pH is 7.4. So uh, this idea that one turns into alkaline, it, once it's beyond your stomach, it really doesn't matter, and it's all going to come out your pH 7.4. So this idea that, some, that these acidic foods might be good for reflux because they turn alkaline is completely false. It's, not, it's, it's just basically about saying that they, uh, uh, the sun uh, revolves around the earth and the earth is flat. I mean, it's that, it's that, it's that clear. So I'm glad that question got asked, and I, I, I hope I put it to bed. Um, people ask me what kind of alkaline water I order. Frankly, um, I was tired of hauling bottles and having them shipped. Um, I decided I want to stay on alkaline water. I like it. Um, so I use the Sierra Water Pitcher. She didn't even sell on Amazon, I don't think. Uh, it's on both of my alkaline water links. Um, isn't spicy mustard. Uh, next week I'm going to do a blog. I'm going to finish looking at fruits, vegetables, and condiments. And I want to address a question. We've got, um, 
different pH levels. Um, someone said, oh, this you said this apple is, is 4.6, and someone else said it was 4.2. And I thought about it for a while. Read the article I wrote on onions. I, I suspect it depends upon where they're grown and how much acid is in the soil. And that that may be the determinant for whether this apple from this orchard is more acidic or less acidic than another one. But I am, um, I just, uh, I'm, I'm very sad. Um, is my, my ISFET pH meter, and it, I don't know if it's, this needs to be cleaned better, but stop working. Um, so I ordered a new one, um, a more expensive, they don't make that one anymore. You don't need a pH meter. I think pH paper works for most stuff. For example, when you're making a smoothie and you want to have it pH balanced. I want to make sure I get through questions. Someone asked, what's the definition of being cured? Uh, you don't have any symptoms unless you really misbehave. You don't have chronic throat clearing. You don't have a sense of lump of the throat. You don't have shortness of breath. So, um, someone wants to know about the pH values and the FDA website, the, uh, the uh, 1973 mandate that food needs to be acidified and the beverages crossing state lines, and nobody ever said don't make it too acidic. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get that back to you. Uh, some of these questions will be answered um, uh, within the next week or so on, on Facebook. Um, I have seafood allergy and can't take Gaviscon. Um, I don't know the answer to whether that's really true. Um, the seafood allergies, um, you know, is the link to iodine, and is there any iodine in this? So I don't know the answer. Um, I think you can take Gaviscon. I like Gaviscon Advanced Aniseed. Um, someone said, you know, that it's hard to get these days. I went online uh, and got it from Amazon, and to my shock, it was less expensive than other sites. I used to put Gaviscon Advanced Aniseed 500 ml bottle, and then I'd get the wherever it was cheapest. Um, I live in, uh, this is Barb. And, oh, by the way, Gaviscon says seven days max. You can take Gaviscon. That's the one you can take before bed the rest of your life. It's seaweed. Um, it is the most popular reflux remedy in the world. Other than the United States, it's not available here because two companies can't get along. Uh, you can go to the pharmacy and find some Gaviscon, but it's not good stuff. The good stuff comes from pretty much the UK. Um, you can take it. You can take it. Now, uh, this uh, Barb says that um, she lives in um, in Europe and she can't find Pepsid. The first thing I would say is Pepsid is famotidine, and it may have a different trade name. Um, and the other alternative that's safe is cimetidine, which in this country, in America, goes by Tagamet. Um, there's some question about whether there's tachyphylaxis and whether they stop working over time. It's not been my experience um, with, you know, thousands of patients. Um, so, uh, famotidine and I, uh, uh, and uh, cimetidine, and I would avoid ranitidine because of the question of its contaminants. So, we're almost out of time. Is it true, Neil? That, PP, that formatidine is better for LPR than PPIs? Um, the answer is, look at my articles on uh, proton pump inhibitors. Um, in my opinion, proton pump inhibitors should be removed from the market. You have proton pumps in your brain, in your kidneys, in your heart. Um, a sudden death is a complication of proton pump inhibitors. Besides, no one is ever cured by a PPI. Symptoms are improved. So, um, I can't uh, say more than this question, which is the next one, which is Addis's question. I advise 20 milligrams before breakfast, 20 milligrams before dinner, and 40 milligrams before bed. This gets me to the last question that I'm going to have to address. It depends upon where you are in your reflux. If you've had reflux for years, if you have sleep apnea, if you have any of these complicating variables, you need to go on a detox program. So that means the diet is, um, the diet, by the way, on my blog is on, is it good to be vegetarian, is a detox diet. So it's low acid, low fat, only fruits, melons, and bananas. Um, you got you to gotta eat like uh, five hours now, five hours before you lie down. You got to sleep at 45 degrees. You do take the famotidine. 
and uh, read the gum chewing. It's really good. The alkaline water, the alkaline water spray. You do the whole shooting match with precision, um, like you were in a detox program for something else for a month. If you can slap the reflux cold, then uh, there's a good chance the valves will heal. So it's not a permanent problem. Uh, the more you reflux, the worse the valve works and so on. And so when you lie down, what's in your stomach is in your esophagus, is in your throat, is in your lung, in your sinuses. And so so, once the detox is over, it's not like go back to where you were before. Your days of going out for beer and pizza after the movies at night, uh, that ship sailed if you're a refluxer forever. That's never going to happen again uh, with if, if, if you play smart. So, uh, during the next phase, which actually take, can take months, you have to introduce foods. What if I don't sleep so high? And don't, don't, don't change 14 variables at once. Um, if you eat the same breakfast every morning, change it. And so I'm running out of time, and I want you to know that I'd like to talk more about um, about diet next time. Um, and the last question I want to address, is there any value in taking the Pepsin home test? No. It's my test. I own the patent for it for 17 years. It's a research tool. If you send a tube to Europe, and it's positive, it means nothing. If it's negative, it means nothing. That's like sticking your nose outside any time of day once and saying, oh, the weather here is snow. It's snow once in a year, maybe here. So the answer is I find this test only good for research uh, when it can be repeated. And uh, so that's all there is for today. We'll try to answer more questions online. And the other thing you can do is suggest topics. I'm doing this once a month. I have to tell you, I will not be here next month. There'll be no Facebook Live in March. Um, I'm going to be doing traveling and a lot of other things, and it's just it's going to be too hard for me to do it next month. So the first Wednesday in April will be the next. So again, I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, please expand um, my reach. You know, these get uh, uh, put on the YouTube, my YouTube channel. Uh, let people know about the blog, let people know about the Facebook, and that this is the main place where questions can get asked and answered. And I hope today was good for you and you got some answers. Bye.